We also have to consider the investment in net operating working capital, the NOWC. Each year, the company needs to invest in the operating working capital. So if we assume that the operating working capital is 12% of the sales revenue, we can estimate how much an OWC is needed each year and how much additional investment in an OWC has to be made each every year. So if you look at the table here, at time zero or say beginning of the project, if we assume that an OWC is 12% of the sales revenue and sales revenue for year one is estimated to be $250,000. Then $250,000 multiplied by 12%, we have $30,000. That's what we need in year zero or say at the beginning of the year as working capital to get the project started. And so that's why we have to invest uh, $30,000 and that, that's why the negative sign uh, that's for an investment in NOWC. Now year one, at the end of year one, we actually can recover the $30,000 investment in NOWC, but by the end of year one, we look at year two and year two sales revenue is estimated to be 257500 and 12% of that would be 30,900. If we have to invest 30,900, well, we can recover a 30,000 from last year. That means we have to make an additional investment of $900. And same with year three. At the end of year two, we look at year three, and year three's revenue is estimated to be this much. 12% of that would be 31,827. And um, from year two, we can recover a total of 30,900. So the difference between these two numbers is how much we have to invest as an additional investment in an OWC. That is a negative 927. So we can do that for year three or the end of year three. And then by the end of year four, that is when you wrap up the whole project. And uh, that means the all these investment in net operating working capital can be recovered by the end of year four. So 32,783 that you invested before can be recovered and that's why you have now a positive number 32,783 as additional cash inflow from the recovery of working capital investments. Again, let's go back to the timeline. Remember at year zero, we had to make a $240,000 capital investment or say long-term investment to buy and ship and install the equipment. And then we have to make another $30,000 investment in working capital. And uh, each every year, these black numbers are the operating cash flows we estimated. And uh, then the blue numbers are the additional investment in an OWC each every year. So. At the end, as you see, uh, all previous investment in net operating working capital will be recovered, so we have an additional 32,783 cash inflow. So in this updated timeline, now we have both long-term and short-term investment at the beginning, and the operating cash flows each every year, and additional investment and or recovery of an OWC each every year. And then the question is, what else do we have to consider? Now we have to consider the salvage value. That's when you wrap up the project and sell the equipment at the end of year four. According to the information given, we're supposed to sell the equipment at $25,000. Now the machine or equipment would already be fully depreciated by the end of year four. That means its book value would be zero. So IRS will take it as you make additional $25,000 out of uh, zero value equipment or say you're making a profit of $25,000. And so they will tax you on the 40% tax rate. That means you pay $10,000 tax. That means after tax, you end up with $15,000 additional cash inflow by selling or say liquidating the equipment. So now we add this. 15, additional $15,000 to end of year four. Uh, that is the after-tax salvage value. 
and uh, looks like this timeline now is complete. Let's take a look at a side note on the after-tax salvage value. What if you terminate a project before the asset is fully depreciated? For example, if this equipment is sold after three years at $25,000, how much tax should be paid and how much ta after-tax cash can the company receive? Now, we say the tax basis is the original basis minus the accumulated depreciation. That's why if we sell the machine in, in year four, remember the machine would already be fully depreciated by year four, so the tax basis will be zero. How much tax the company is supposed to pay from this transaction is based on the difference between the sale price of the equipment and uh, the tax basis. That's why if the company sells the machine at the end of year four, tax basis would be zero and sale price is $25,000, then the company has to pay 40% out of the whole $25,000. Now in this example on the side note, if the company sells the equipment after three years, then tax basis will be 240, the original depreciation basis minus the depreciation expenses from the previous three years, I'll say that have the accumulated depreciation over the past three years. That means on the book, the equipment still has $16.8,000 value remaining. Since sale proceed is $25,000, then 25 minus the 16.8 is considered as a profit the company makes from this transaction and IRS will tax on this profit, so 40% multiplied by the difference between 25 and 16.8, and so the tax amount is $3.28,000. That's what the company has to pay as tax. So how much would the company receive after tax? $25,000 sales proceed minus the tax they have to pay, then they have the after tax cash inflow. Now let's go back to our example. Um, we are looking at all the four years of the project's life. We established that initial capital expenditure is $240,000 and also at time zero, the company has to make a net operating working capital investment of $30,000. So total cash outflow at time zero is a negative $270,000. Year one, the operating cash flow from the project is this much, and then the company has to make additional investment in that operating working capital. So these two numbers together, net cash flow from the project in year one, I'll say by the end of year one is 105.780. So we put this number under year one. And same thing with year two and year three. Now for year four, we consider the operating cash flow and you notice that year four operating cash flow is lower than the operating cash flow in year one and year two. That is actually because of the accelerated depreciation in the first two years and the lower amount of depreciation expense in year three and year four. Also in year four, that's when you recover all the investment in that operating working capital. So we have a positive 32,782. And then the after-tax salvage cash flow, $15,000. So all these numbers are from our previous calculations in the previous slides. So if you add up these three numbers for year four, the total cash flow is 136,457, and we put this number under year four. Now we have a complete timeline with all the cash flows estimated. Can you calculate the MPV, IRR, modified IRR, and payback for this project? We can calculate the MPV. It turns out to be 88, $1,027. IRR is calculated to be 23.9%. Payback period is 2 plus 44 divided by 93, so it turns out to be about 2.5 years. MPV, IRR, and payback calculations were introduced in the last lecture, so I would recommend you to use the cash flow amount on this timeline and do the calculation by yourself and verify these numbers. We can also calculate this project's modified IRR. Remember the back is 10%. We use 10% as the reinvestment rate. And um, so 105,780 from first year 
reinvested at 10% for three years. That's why we have 140,793 by the end of year four. Second year's cash flow 119,523 multiplied by one plus 10% at the power of two. That's why we have 144,623. And 93,011 from year three multiplied by one plus 10% at the power of one. That's how we got 102,312. And we add up these three numbers, so the total future value by the end of year four, assuming all these cash flows are reinvested at the the back ten percent, the total future value is five twenty four, one eighty five. Now, the rate of return that makes your two seventy thousand dollars investment become five twenty four one eighty five in four years. Um, if you calculate this return, that's our modified IRR, eighteen、uh, percent. Modified IRR calculation,、uh, we introduced that in details in the last lecture. So I would also recommend you to practice with this example and see if you can get the same eighteen percent MIRR. And apparently, according to the MPV or IRR or MIRR calculation,、uh, the project has positive MPV and.、Uh, Both IRR and modified IRR are greater than the cost of capital of ten percent. So this is a very decent project, and the company should accept the project.